My name is Sean and welcome to this uh, JC Chemistry sharing session. So in this session, I'll be just like giving my own personal experience, or share my own personal experience with you all and hopefully get you all to um, choose this subject if you're interested. So, uh, why can't I click next slide? Okay, just to do some promotion about Inky Learning. So I believe you guys have heard this a few times already if you all joined the previous session this morning, but generally, um, Basically, Inky Learning is um, comprises of a group of graduates, of JC graduates who aim to provide some um, connotation and academic help to JC students across Singapore. Let me give a general introduction about myself. So as I said, my name is Sean and I'm a Hua Chong graduate. I recently graduated from Hua Chong last year and so I'm 19 this year serving um, NS and that's why my hair is bald. <laughs> So yeah, a little context, I took BCME, that means it's Biochemistry, Math and Economics um, back in JC, as well as H3 Chemistry. So yeah, this is an additional subject that I took, which I'll be also sharing a bit later. And my CCA was um, table tennis back in JC, back in secondary school and also back in primary school. So I've been playing table tennis my entire life. And yeah, some of my hobbies uh, comprise of um, watching and discussing time travel films. <laughs> yeah, I really enjoy time travel. So if you guys have any discussion or anything you want to discuss about time travel, you can just, you know, hit me up. And I'm also quite a sporty person. I like other than table tennis, I like to play, you know, frisbee or bowling. Oh uh, yeah, I basically like to exercise. Yeah, so this is me when I have hair and yeah, that's not important. So I'll just <laughs> carry on right now. And here's our table of contents today. So basically I'll be sharing with you my experience of how I transitioned from IP, okay, I was in the IP program, but how we can transition from IP or O level to JC, what can we expect from that? I also share my personal experience and how I feel about JC chemistry in general. And for more technical aspects, I also share about the differences between H1, H2 and H3 chemistry, as well as um, potential university courses um, that requires chemistry, and also possible career path in the future before giving some um, of my advice and Q and yeah and so Q and A also. Lastly, yeah. So without further ado, I will just jump straight into how um, what you can expect when you transition for, whether from an IP program or O level program to um, JC Chem. So yeah, first point definitely I believe it applies to all subject, but I think um, chemistry is actually one of the most demanding in terms of. Uh, content knowledge to digest and stomach up. So this is just a brief overview of the syllabus, the difference in the syllabus. As you can see this um, for our H2 chemistry, which is our GC chemistry, the topics that are tested is definitely much, much more, firstly more and also more demanding as compared to what um, you guys have experienced back in IP or O level program. So yeah, there's no sugar coating here. <laughs> Um, one example I could give is like definitely organic chemistry. So regardless of whether you are in the IP or O level program, I believe we didn't have much experience with um, uh, organic chemistry back then. What we gone through is actually literally the tip of the iceberg. But as you can see in the syllabus in our H2 chemistry, um, organic chemistry takes up, you know, like 40% of our entire syllabus. So you guys, yeah, just a warning. <laughs> <laughs> There's no sugar coating here. It's gonna be a lot more content um knowledge to digest. So yeah, and yeah, my second point also comes together with our first the first point. So like whatever um content topics they are going to um go through, it will be definitely much more in depth. So yeah, I will go back to the previous slide. Although there are some like parallels as you can see from in between when you compare the H2 chemistry and O level chemistry, there are some subjects, for example, electrolysis, atomic structure, chem bonding. Yeah, all these subjects, all these topics are actually pretty similar, but what we learn in O level on hindsight, what we learn on O level is really just scratching the surface. So I can give you a simple example. Uh, so if you guys remember how your what is uh, alkene back in O level or IP program, so I tried to dig up some. Um, I should, yeah, I tried to read through my IP like the lecture notes, or I also went to look through the O level <laughs> content, the O level book. And yeah, that's all like, I believe you guys know that alkenes have this formula, alkenes are unsaturated and, and margarine, I don't know, yeah, margarine, I don't know how it's related, but yeah, there's margarine back then. But in JC, right, um, there is legit much more, much, much more to like how um, alkenes work. 
there is, yeah, it's actually much more sophisticated as you can see from the number of um, alien language that you can see here. And yeah, it looks alien to you right now, but okay, yeah, hopefully when in the future, if you do take um, H2 chemistry, you can um, appreciate all these phrases and keywords better. And yeah, and the third point is uh, I would like to bring up is about how um, when you transition from IP to an O-level to JC, there's a lot of unlearning that you need to do. So what I mean by unlearning, so I will not say that um, the IP or O-level program, um, the syllabus is factually inaccurate. Like, okay, I'll give an example right now. So yeah, um, back in, <laughs> oh my God, I'm just using memes, but like, yeah, back in O-level or IP, I believe that some of the subject, uh, some of the knowledge taught to us, or like, yeah, to, or to score marks is actually not very accurate um, in the grand scheme of things when we transition into JC chemistry, as you can see from the how we name electronic configuration in O level and in JC is just completely different. But that doesn't mean it's like it's wrong. Like maybe in secondary school is wrong. I think it's just because like uh, back in secondary school, like they taught what they needed to teach us, so we can you know just. Yeah, we so saw our brains will not explode uh, back then in, G in secondary school. The same goes for the transition between primary school to secondary school, secondary school to JC. And I believe in the future when we transition from JC to uni or so, if we do take a science related course, I think there are some information that you definitely need to be willing to, you know, unlearn and relearn. Yeah, oh yeah, another example. Yeah, so I believe um, back in secondary school, um, the in terms of hydrolysis, we have these two equations that um, represents the electrolysis of water. But if we transition or when we transition into JC chemistry, you can see that, whoa, the there's a lot more to learn. So yeah, hopefully we we'll, I think one advice is to, to give you is to you must be willing to, you know, unlearn everything. And, you know, life is just a constant process of realizing you're wrong. And yeah, okay, I'm going too deep right now. Let's move on. So. <laughs> Yeah, okay, I think last but not least, um, in terms of lesson structure, I realized that yeah, there's a bit of difference between our secondary school and JC's um, style of teaching. So if you guys, I think it applies to, I'm not sure about physics, but it applies to biology as well. So back in secondary school, um, usually our classroom is usually just like a classroom and the teacher will just walk in and, you know, teach, go through homework and do everything. The teacher like, is just thanking the entire like syllabus. Uh. Oh, yeah, so the teacher is expected to teach you everything. But when we transition into JC Chem, I'd like to say that um, I think there's more independent learning involved. So this is how it works in, J in our lectures. So firstly, um, we are usually taught in, back then when there wasn't really COVID, yeah, we are usually taught in by uh, masses. So there's just one lecturer to like a, 200, a few hundred students. Yeah, and usually people sleep uh, because there's no one catching them to fall asleep, you know. And But the thing is, it's their own loss because when we go back to the classroom setting, we don't really have, um, the teacher will not really like go through the entire syllabus again. So we are supposed to complete something called tutorials, which are just like our homework in secondary school. So in the classroom setting, the teacher or the tutor will just, um, for my case, is the teacher, the teacher will just like arrow people to go up and present your answer. And yeah, so if you don't do your homework, yeah, just screw that. So, but other than that, if you are, there's definitely much more like um, self-directed learning involved in JC. So yeah, there's or not much, yeah, there'll be less spoon feeding from the teacher and the role of teacher would sort of change yeah, in JC. So, okay, now I'll just share with you um, my personal experience and how I, my opinion on JC chemistry. But yeah, in conjunction, I'll also share with you the, this is just basically the entire syllabus in one shot. You can just take a screenshot if you want to study ahead. But why would you do that? But okay. Um, yeah, so we can split um, our GC syllabus into three different, three different families. Uh. So there's a foundational chemistry, there's a physical aspect and the organic as organic chemistry. So what I highlighted in red is basically what you're going to go through in yeah, go through in J1. So yeah, that's quite a lot of topics to yeah, to see. But I think the, at the for the first two topic uh, for the first two terms, I guess like I think the topics that you guys will be going through will be kind of similar to uh 
back then when you study um, in secondary school. So that you have your atomic structure, chem bonding. Okay, gaseous state might be new, I'm not sure, but acid base, all this should be quite familiar with it. But as I said, there'll be definitely much, much, much more in depth. So you have to be, to be prepared. Um, yeah, there will be a quite a steep learning curve, but hopefully this is still quite familiar at the start. But I believe all hell breaks loose. <laughs> okay, for as I mean for my case, because like when we go on to physical chemistry, so I I personally did not enjoy <laughs> physical chemistry, in my own opinion, because of all the yeah, I get why they don't like it. Why not like it? It's just a lot of math involved. So I think kinetics, yeah, from kinetics onwards, right? Um kinetics is this one. So I think things will just actually start like the difficulty will just keep increasing and increasing. And in J2, these are the remaining topics. And yeah, actually I don't know much to say, but this is just a general overview of what you're going to you know, go through. And yeah, so what do I like about chemistry? Okay, just to say my favorite top, my favorite subject in uh, all my life or in JC is um, chemistry. So why do I really enjoy chemistry? I, <laughs> I enjoy seeing, okay, first thing I believe like chemistry like when I start study and like study like the, the syllabus I realized that actually like saying that it's quite beautiful to see the bigger picture uh, behind chemistry so what I mean by that we go back to our my favorite the our syllabus so my favorite um, family of subject is definitely organic chemistry yeah although people might just go EU uh, but like no I like I like organic chemistry because uh, on hindsight when I look back at like whatever we learn right I realized everything is like pretty much connected and yeah, you can't really study a uh, organic yeah, or any content here like independently of others. Uh. At the end of the day, everything is connected. And once you can see the bigger picture, I believe that I think it makes um our A levels or makes learning like pretty much more enjoyable. And yeah, moving on to the second point, it's also not all like just you know cramming of knowledge. Is if you guys can appreciate that like, you know take some time to understand and appreciate like the full picture. So once I yeah I believe that some people, most people struggle with chemistry is because um about how they think that there's a lot of memorization going on, but I actually beg to differ because I believe once you start to understand or oh, yeah start to take your time to understand and appreciate the full picture, there is not much mem okay there will be lesser definitely memorization but yeah there will be it will not be as painful as you know other people what most people say yeah. and last but not least i also see like view chemistry as a pretty challenging topic like okay yeah no joke um chemistry i think is considered one of the most difficult subject in jc if you take a look at sg exams reddit and how people you know complain and whine about it you can yeah it's quite telling that actually jc chemistry is uh, and especially h2 the normal the h2 syllabus is actually pretty demanding but like i see since I like chemistry, I see it as a, you know, a challenge. And yeah, but hey, okay, there's definitely downsides. So steep learning curve, definitely. So uh when we transition from secondary school JC, you might get a little shocked by like what's to come because your subjects, like for example, atomic structure back in JC, uh, secondary school, it used to be just a you know a few pages, or your teacher might give you just like yeah, basically a few pages of notes. But when we go to JC, you realize that oh the, like the whole thing is just like one chunk of, it's just part of a giant like hundred page like lecture book. Like uh, maybe one third of it is um atomic structure, then fifty pages of chem bonding. So like oh, there's a lot of um new stuff to take in, and especially when you transition uh, during the transition phase, like you know you have orientation, you have your competitions, also your season. I think everything with a lot of er like everything that's going on. I think it's so will affect how you can transition uh, from um secondary camp to JC camp and yeah information overload as I said there's a lot of lecture books like yeah there's a, actually quite a few lecture books and if you guys don't know how to or the lecture no the lecture books are actually meant to like, you know give you uh, the full picture or like a lot of like information uh, to cram and uh, if you see how I study later, I think it will make it easier. So, how, yeah, how I take notes with chemistry, I believe that you have to take notes in chemistry or else like if you want to try to like cram all five lecture, five, six, seven lecture books before any exam, I think you'll burn out quite um, quickly. And also, okay, last but not least, I think this is just a very small point, but like sometimes some stuff in chemistry just is left unexplained because perhaps uh, it, it's too difficult for us to understand or 
yeah, actually not needed in the syllabus. So to me, sometimes I find it pretty annoying. <laughs> and yeah, I'll just, for out of curiosity, I'll always like, you know, go and like, um, learn more on my own. Uh. So yeah, I'm a chemistry nerd. Uh, but <laughs> Yeah, so I'll, yeah, to prove why I'm a nerd in chemistry, I'll show you my studying habits. So this is how I, um, I believe like, as I said, I think note taking in chemistry is one of the most important like habits uh, or else you will find it much, um, difficult, much more difficult to, you know, survive chemistry. So I like to compart like, um, taking notes is not just like cramming, like repeating what the lecture book is saying. I like to make it organized, compartmentalize the notes. Like, essentially like either in a table format for this case. So you have all your periodic table stuff and how the how you can compare between like a uh, group one to group eight using a different factors such as atomic radius, ionic radius, blah 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 blah. So in one in one glance you can you know study a lot of things at once. So usually these notes actually in the lecture book it spans across like maybe 20 pages, but if you are able to condense your notes efficiently, I think it will help a lot. So yeah, also for organic chemistry, as I said, there is, uh, I like to, I realize that mind maps are the best way to study um, organic chemistry, it's my, opi my, my own opinion, but like, yeah, you can see it's quite confusing if you don't know um, what to look out for, but I like to color code my, my stuff as, as well. So yeah, a bit OCD, but, and yeah, even, even camp prep, I have to do notes because I was, I've been feeling camp prep. Oh, yeah, let me talk about camp prep. Maybe camp prep isn't, okay, I think, what's the difference between O-level and, JC Camprack. Uh, I guess it's harder, but <laughs> okay. But Camprack, I think there's a lot. Okay, especially there's. I think it's much more demanding in terms of. Um, there are new topics to you know. Ha that have that can be tested in practical. So whether it's organic QA, yeah, you remember QA, but yeah, organic QA. Whether it's your energetics, um. Do you have do you guys have energetics in secondary school? But yeah, I think and yeah, okay, energetics, but there'll be much more like new graphs or new stuff that can be tested. And but after like failing a few times, like throughout the year until prelims, I realized that wait, there's actually a way to like okay. Yeah, I made these notes after prelims, but I realized there's a way to maybe spot questions. Okay, yeah, although I don't advise spotting or like preparing for exams, but I yeah, I needed to pass camp prep, yeah, so I had to make notes for like this. Okay, I'm going off track. Yeah, so um, what are the other ways that I went to, uh, like, what are my other studying ha habits? So I remember using Khan Academy for a moment, because as I said just now, like sometimes the chemistry uh, lecture book is insufficient in explaining some stuff and you leave some people puzzled like me. Some people might just accept it, but like, yeah, I went to like dig further and I realized that, oh, there's much more to it. And yeah, and that's why, okay, I don't say anything else, but okay. Yeah, also I think, uh, your, as I said, your tutors are now like, you know, not like full teachers, but like you can still um, ask questions. Whether I like to, yeah, my, I really respected my camp teacher back then. He's a, very, uh, he's a genius. And so like we will always ask questions, you know, whenever we don't understand something that's um, going on. So yeah, don't feel free to, you know, like, you know, WhatsApp your teachers. Yeah, uh, hopefully that doesn't bug them too much. But yeah, also, um, Peer support is very important in JC. So I was glad that I was in a class with like-minded people. <laughs> yeah, because I was, yeah, yeah like-minded people, everyone was quite nerdy and like, okay, I'm not, okay, I don't, I don't, I don't want to make myself look like a nerd. I'm not a nerd, but like, uh, yeah, uh, in class, like we always laugh about chem jokes. Like, yeah, does anyone do that? But yeah, we, like, I like how we laugh over chem jokes. And one of the time I got my pants, I accidentally tore my pants <laughs> what was I while, while sharing like while doing a chemistry joke, but yeah, but the point is that we en like we enjoy like working together, discussing um in oh my god, what am I doing? But yeah, <laughs> discussing each other like chemistry stuff, and you know like making making the subject more fun. Uh. So that depends on your class culture in the future, but yeah, do always study in groups. I think that helps a lot. And last but not least, yes, it's Inky learning from now on. So you guys, if you guys have any um, help, uh, chemistry help or any subjects um, that you need help in the future, you can always um, join our Discord channel. I didn't had that, uh, have this back then, but now you guys have it. So it's an additional advantage. Yeah, so okay, I'll go to the more technical aspects now. H1 versus H2 versus H3. Actually, all this knowledge can be found online. I think all the tuition websites also say, um, 
actually we are kind of different from them. But okay, let's compare between H1 and H2. So what's the difference between H1 and H2 chemistry? So uh, yeah, just on the right side, you can see the picture of like how they differ. Definitely, H, uh, I recommend you guys to start off with H2 uh, yeah, for the first year, if you guys want to. Because uh, I guess for H2 it will still be more beneficial for your rank points eventually during A levels. But if you do find the H2 chemistry syllabus too much, too demanding and rigorous, I think if there's no shame dropping to H1 because the workload and also the difficulty will be reduced. So you can still be 3 H2 and 1 H1. And that can still give you your, although it's still half the, it's half the, it work, it's worth half the rank points. Did anyone tell you all how the rank point system works? But anyways, um, yeah, it's half the rank points. So you, like instead of 20 points maximum, in H2 you get 20 points if you score A. Uh, for H1 you only get 10 points if you score A. But that's okay, overall if you guys are aiming for the 90 rank point and dropping the H1 is still possible. So when do you drop to H1? So Maybe at the end of promos, most people, you know, after reviewing their promos results, they feel that it will not be advantageous for them to continue H2 because it's going to yeah, take a toll like on the other subjects as well. And yeah, you can take, you can still, uh, the decision is, the offer to drop is still like up until, I guess, after your mid years in, uh, yeah, your mid years in J2. And yeah, just be certain that you are not interested in any like chemistry related uni courses in the future. Like, like for example, if, if you are, not interested in studying medicine or dentistry, then yeah, you can just drop to H1 or else if you have like your parents wants you to study like uh, medicine and dentistry, you, I think you should, yeah, you can, I think H1 is not enough, definitely. So yeah, in terms of, I'll take this time to also show you the, how the uh, exam structure work for both H1 and H2. So as you can see, this is from some tuition center, but like there's a quite a huge difference between the H1 chemistry and H2 chemistry in terms of number of papers and also number of marks to score. So the diff main difference is maybe yeah, H2, there's paper four, which is practical, and there's, there isn't it um, in H1 chemistry. As for the rest, oh yeah, I'll just take some time to share the H2. Uh. So you have your paper one, MCQ, 30 marks. Paper two is like short answer questions, 75 marks and two hours long. So it's quite a rush for that. And paper three is, I think, the the long yeah, the longest the long questions are yeah the, it's called frq but yeah it's just long questions there there are three to four questions and each of them are worth 20 marks you know and there's also like definitely like yeah two choose one in the section b as you can see from the picture here so yeah definitely the workload is much um less for h1 so if you guys consider if you guys in the future you guys feel like after the regret taking h2 chemistry you can also drop to h1 and now for something more familiar, um, H3 chemistry. So yeah, as I said, I took H3 chemistry at the end of J1. So yeah, H3 chemistry is for those who are seriously passionate with chemistry like me, and also like consistently like scoring quite okay for like H2 to be shortlisted, not really shortlisted, like to be like above a certain percentile at, during promos, that you have a choice to um, go for H3. So yeah, H3 is a whole different league of Difficulty actually, yeah, I cry a lot. No, I cried, yeah, I cried during one lesson in H3. Yeah, that is seriously, it's much more difficult and than H2, and it, it's just a different realm, right, essentially. But yeah, if you guys can manage, you guys have to expect um your timetables will end, your some of your days will end longer than the rest. So my back then I had two H3 lessons um per week, so it ends. Uh, it was from four to six, uh. So when your friends can go home at two o'clock, maybe you and your friends have to your H3 friends need to stay back and you know either you discuss or cry over your homework and yeah heavier workload also so one paper usually my yeah I find it the most you know the work to reward ratio the the time spent uh, it's, it's just not worth it uh. like I spend like you know five hours on just like one tutorial and yeah that's not it's quite unless you are really in, into it like you know you actually want to get get good you know so, uh, then you will spend that long and yeah but Overall, the advantage for H3 chemistry, once you get you can merit or distinction, I think it will be a pretty good portfolio. Your portfolio will be much more impressive uh, if you want to apply for uni. So uh, this is for in the future for the future because J the H3 chemistry will be only for J2. So yeah, moving on to university courses and career paths. Uh, essentially, 
um, chemistry is told, is said to be the central science of yeah for so the central science. So you guys have to take chemistry if you want to go to all these courses ah. If, yeah. I actually don't know much about like uni application, but like yeah, basically your medicine, dentist, and pharm pharmacy, all these big like science related courses. If you want to go, definitely just take chemistry, and you can take a bio or physics to go along with it. And yeah, chemistry can be also used if you want to go to the engineering, um, study engineering in the future, as you can see in the ye the yellow highlighted. So these are the and yeah, it's quite interesting. There's a lot of cool stuff that you can do with chemistry. A lot of cool courses. Yeah, so no, I'm only 30 minutes into it. But okay, final advice. So yeah, in summary, I think that since I'm I have graduated and on hindsight, I actually think that yeah, there's a huge difference between secondary school chemistry and JC chemistry. So yeah, there's no sugar coating to it. Whatever we learn in um secondary school chem is really just scratching the surface. Yeah, as, yeah, as if you go to, yeah, if you want to experience something more challenging in the future for chemistry, I think chemistry, you can try out JC chemistry. It's going to be quite interesting and more demanding. So, and yeah, so your transition also, either some people might have a more smooth sailing um, transition from secondary school to JC, or some people might experience like, yeah, turbulence, uh, heavy turbulence. And I think it's both, it, at the start it's still fine. You can just, you know, just go through the process and, you know, experience it yourself uh, actually. Just if you are interested in chemistry and taking like, yeah, the, what do you call three, three science and one humans. So yeah, definitely try out chemistry, but different people have different experiences. Uh. So for me, I might find chemistry more smooth sailing because uh, I like chemistry and chemistry is not my strongest subject back in secondary school. But some people might find it like really difficult. But as I said, you can always um turn to your teachers and your friends for like support and consultations. And if not, there's always you can always drop to H1. There's no shame to it. And yeah, so some advice I can okay. So yeah, almost like yeah. And also coupled with even though your ship may be smooth sailing at the start, but coupled with like a lot of different aspects of uni, whether it's peer pressure, competitions. Other academic stress, you know, trying to juggle your social life together with your academic life and also maybe just life in general. Yeah. You, I think altogether sometimes it might be quite stressful and you might miss out some lessons. Um, yeah, you might not be able to focus during lessons or, you know, something like, for example, um, during seasons or competition period, you are, you ought to like, you know, lose, uh, miss out some lessons and it could make it more challenging for you to catch up with the rest. Um, yeah, sometimes you miss if you miss a lesson or like a completely miss a topic, it might have a domino effect on the rest of the subject on, on the rest of the topics. Since I said everything is connected in chemistry, yeah. So these are challenges indeed, but I believe that uh, when there's a will, there's a way. Yeah. So yeah, <laughs> yeah. So yeah. So the route to getting A's is definitely or getting yeah A's if that's your goal is not um definitely not easy. I would say that uh, for when you study chemistry, JC chemistry, there's definitely much more discipline um, required. Yeah, you have to actually invest your time um, and effort to try to understand your stuff. Not just don't just cram knowledge into your head, and you know once you know, just don't know how to apply when it comes to exams. And yeah, we expect more self-directed learning in JC. Actually, most subjects are actually self-directed learning. Sometimes to uh, there might not be even a teacher in class. You have to just you know look at the online videos to learn a subject, learn a topic. So yeah, you have to take ownership and don't don't fall behind too much. Ah. like yeah, that's really an important advice. And yeah, be prepared for setbacks. You know, I think even if you are a scoring student back in secondary school, I think a transition from secondary school to JC, not just for chemistry but for everything. Sometimes you might experience some. Um, you know, you suddenly see a C, D, or E on your paper, and you just be like, oh no, like you just feel bad about yourself because it may maybe to you it hasn't happened before. But I think it's fine. We are, it's just part of the learning process because ultimately the goal is to nail your A levels or your prelims eventually. So it's okay. I uh, just be more 
as I said, yeah, di discipline, just keep practicing. I think there's a lot of practicing required for chemistry if you want to, you know, get the full grasp of the entire syllabus, you have to be exposed to like many different kind of questions. Make sure, yeah. And yeah, and I say um from a, not from an academic um, point of view, just appreciate I guess the topic, or the subject itself uh, because there's a lot to it's quite yeah beautiful. <laughs> I maybe it will not like my it will not resonate with you all, but like, I really enjoy um studying this topic back subject back then, and also I'm sharing it with you all. Hopefully, if you guys join my um tomorrow, there will be a chemistry tester course, and I also will be hosting it. So maybe I'll hope like. I through that tester course, you guys can also see my passion in chemistry. Yeah. And yeah, just enjoy what you study and that makes like your whole JC life like more less miserable. Uh. Yeah, so I'll be oh I'm I've come to the end of my um presentation. So yeah, I'll just look for the um questions that you guys have posted in uh Mentimeter. So how do I use this? Okay, let's start from the first question. What is your advice to catch up since we haven't been reading, uh, learning about organic chem? Um, okay, uh, my sister was old, was an O-level student last year. She also, I think I, if I remember correctly, it was a common last topic, right? So most of y'all didn't even get a taste of um, organic chem in secondary school, but that's okay, uh, I feel, because actually uh, what, whatever you learn in secondary school that Organic chem isn't really organic chem actually. Like it's just really just the surface. So I think that shouldn't really uh, shouldn't that bother you or it shouldn't let them feel that you are disadvantaged. So when it actually comes to organic chem, when like, I think it's usually after promos, the J like at the end of J1, that you will actually start learning organic chem. Uh, my advice to you is to okay, give me a while, I'll just go all the way. I'll show you the slide. Yeah, when you go back to Organic chem. Um, pay at, pay attention to the first few topics. Uh, I guess that's my advice to you. So introduction to organic chemistry. Although it's a very small sub, uh, minor topic that many people just you know don't know what's going on and just like you know ignore it. I on hindsight, I realized that actually that the first two topics or the first two topics are the most important topics in you know um, solidifying the foundation um, behind organic chem. So. And how? What other advice to catch up? Um, if you guys want to, I wouldn't advise you all to. Should I advise you all to start? Start studying now? No, I don't think so. Uh, but yeah, don't don't be so formal about it. But because everyone will be on, will start at the same. Um, have, everyone will have the same start, uh, So shouldn't worry so much about it. And other advice, I will say that okay, making notes, as I said, making notes is important. For organic, especially for organic chem, because organic chem actually has the most, is one of the most rigorous in terms of, yeah, road learning actually. So yeah, make sure your notes is, your notes can, uh, encapsulate every um like multiple, twenty pages of of a topic, and that will make it much easier for to study organic chem. Uh, what do I intend to study in uni? Okay, yeah, it's a, indeed a personal question. I have um quite a di dilemma between okay, I wanted to study pharmaceutical chem, pharmaceutical, uh, pharmaceutical science, or chemistry, any chemistry related or biological, yeah, biochem related um subject course in uni. Yeah, so I've been although this year I've been okay, I've been I accepted the course of data science and computing, which is definitely a huge um, you know, a different realm as compared to chemistry, which I like. I yeah, be re reconsidering my choice now. Yeah, so that's what. Yeah, definitely something chemistry chemistry related will be what I'll be looking for. But yeah, definitely I think there's a dilemma between um what's it called passion versus uh practicality also because I think in Singap in Singapore, I'm not really sure about the pharmaceutical like industry in Singapore, although in the recent years, I mean, in the next few years, I believe it will be booming, but yeah, I'm still having a dilemma with that. So I, this, I'll leave that unanswered. So is it possible to take two history in Hua Chong? Oh, nice meme, thanks. Uh, yes, it is possible to take two history in Hua Chong, but yeah, I think it's actually possible to do. I have a friend that actually was uh, 
shortlisted for taking two H3, but your J1 um, promos results must be there, uh, must be around, must be in the top 20%, like for consistently across all your subjects. So back then, my my GP was like the one that is lacking behind. I, yeah, I was scoring a C or like, yeah, for GP. And then I think that if I was not offered uh, two H3, but I was not sure if I want to take two H3 because imagine if you take, as I said, one H3, if it's two times a week, if you have another H3, so you will definitely sacrifice something in the process uh, in terms of social life or, like, you know, personal time. And yeah, but definitely there is a trade off. But if you're aiming for something like, you're aiming for, you know, the big names, uh, big unis uh, in, big unis in like US or UK, I think 2H3 as a portfolio will definitely, uh, you know, make them, will, will make you the the top, you know, what's it called, cream of the crop, yeah. So, do you have any science or Olympiad experience? Uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. Yeah, I think back in secondary school, I, I think, yeah, I didn't really take the chance or to look out for, you know, this kind of, opportunity although yeah chemistry or science in secondary school was my stronger subject but i didn't really i kind of regret it i wondered like i think if i were to turn back time i think i would have more, be more active in looking out for this kind of um, opportunities yeah so because back then i was yeah so no uh, yeah i wish i i wish i had a chance uh. Can I ask what study ahead for chem is not really recommended? Um, not really recommended. Is it just because of what I said just now, like one sentence? Yeah, I am um, studying ahead for chem. I guess. Um, personal, yeah. I think at the end of the day, it's a personal choice. Uh, if you guys want to, if you guys think that it will give you a head start or make the transition to JC much manageable, I yeah, just feel free and do it. Uh, but. Um, for me, I wanted to like sort of, for me, I wanted to like go with the flow, you know, like you can't study organic, if you study organic chem, as I said just now, you, maybe now you want to, you are scared about organic chem for JC, you want to study now, but study, but it's not until, like the first few topics or the like first half of the year is not organic chem. So I, I also find it a bit pointless, uh, but if you want it to be a like a sort of a taster course, like taste, like you want to taste a bit of like how organic chem is going to be, I think you just feel free to hit this, like, yeah, there's no right or wrong. Sorry, this isn't related, but how much time do you have during JC? Uh, oh my God, I think I need to recall, it's been a year. Uh, how much time do you have in JC? So, well, I can't remember my, my experience, oh my God, what happened? <laughs> it's a, okay, yeah, but, um, back in JC, I think in terms of, what do you mean? I, for me, I remember that I actually still enjoyed my JC life. That like it wasn't just full on marking, except during the bottom half of um, J two uh. I feel like J in J one, or what I advise also J one is just you know, just ex just have a balance between your social life and academic life. You don't need to you know be so scared about losing out or falling behind. And sacrifice whatever experience you have um, in JC because, on hindsight, yeah, I think JC is going to be one of your most um, precious, uh, most memorable experience on, in time in your life. Uh. And yeah, try to make as many friends as possible during orientation. So yeah, because J1, J1 is the best time uh, to, before the exams and all the stakes come in, right? Like, just feel free. For me back then, I also tried, yeah, I tried to have a, try to have a balance. Uh. So I wasn't really like scavenging, like, you know, or mugging every minute, you know, go home. Just, I don't like just go after school, just go home and just do my work. I have um, CCAs, so you enjoy, if you enjoy CCAs, it will also be an, like, it will not be seen as a chore, yeah, or like a liability. So uh, how do I deal with time management? I form my time for working out. Oh, you want to exercise, is it? Uh yeah, how do you how do you allocate time to work out? You literally like tell yourself, okay, thirty minutes or is all you need actually for um exercising actually in a day. But sometimes it feels like you have so much things to do that you don't have time for it. But just allocate 30, 30 minutes or one hour. Either you do a a quick run or just do some you know uh body body weight workouts. 
So time management wise, I think personally I was quite efficient with my time management. I don't like, okay, maybe because I don't have, I don't really game or, or like, yeah, I'm not really addicted to gaming or, or scrolling TikTok back then, you know, like, yeah. Still, I'm not a nerd, yeah, so, yeah, but I didn't scroll much TikTok back then. So I like to, what do you call it? Ting repeat. I, just, I set a to-do list for myself for the day. So I won't call it a day until I'm done with it. Uh, unless, yeah, until I'm done with it. Uh. Then, so yeah, thank you whole time. You start, you, I like to finish whatever um, to-do. I, I, I like to like strike my, you know, cross out my to-do list and it was quite satisfying. Uh. So yeah, one advice is you can have, what do you call it? You can uh, create a mental, either a mental or physical to-do list for the next day. And I think it will, it will be quite satisfying uh, once you com actually complete what you set up to do. Uh. Yeah, what are your thoughts on the difference between H2 and H3 chemistry? Uh, I think I answered that just now already, but like, um, H2 chemistry, there are some, for me, there are some stuff that left is left unexplained. In, yeah, sometimes it's in the appendix section of the lecture book. So normally people don't need to read it because, yeah, don't need to read it because it's in the appendix. But for me, like out of curiosity, like especially for organic chem, I like to, you know, I went to I kind of can mean to it. Like I spent a few hours there or trying to understand what, but I kind of, you won't understand about for now, but yeah, I tried to understand something that, that was confused, that was puzzling me the entire time. So I think because of that passion, right, I wanted to, I, I realized that hey, maybe I have a passion for um, chemistry. I wanted to try H3 chemistry, but H3 chemistry, um, I think it's actually more, it's quite similar to what the biochem or some modules in uni is like. Uh. So it's quite, diff it's really quite different. There's not much overlaps between H2 and H3 chemistry. So you can think it as double the, mem double the workload or double the, what they call rigor, yeah, double the content knowledge to stomach. But history is really just much, 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 much more challenging than yeah. I I can't explain it to you like unless you go through it. But like if you are if the person ask, now whoever's asking this, if you want eventually study history, I think you will see like what's the difference. Like? it's really amazing like, the difference. What's the advice to catch up? Since we haven't really been, hey, wait, why is this repeated? How do I study chem before school starts? Uh, yeah, how? Uh? Um, if you have any senior notes, yeah, uh, any like seniors in JC or any siblings or relatives that don't want your notes, you can just, I guess, you can just um use it for a start. I believe if you want to go for you know tuition tuition centers tester course. I guess you can go and go about it and do it as well. So, yeah. What made you choose chem as a history? Um, it was a decision between econs and chemistry back then. I think, yeah, econs and history, econ or history, chemistry. But I think H2 econs was quite a quite tough and it's considered a art subject. Yeah, art subject. and. So I guess ultimately I chose chem because I re really, really, really like chem. Uh. <laughs> yeah, so pretty much. How do you manage your time well and juggle between CCA duties and competition and studies? Uh, okay, again, time management. Okay, but I'll just share about like, I think some, um, especially, okay, during seasons, like seasonal, seasonal period, that means like during your term, end of term one to the term two period, I, just a head start for you I think for those who are actually going um, for like sports CCAs or any CCAs that um, require, that goes for competition. Uh, um, yeah, be prepared to be missing out on a lot of stuff or you might be even too tired sometimes to listen in class. So like usually yeah, during competition period, you can see the entire class is just taking a nap. Uh. <laughs> yeah, well, the teacher, the teacher also kind of understand sometimes, but yeah, because the period, your priorities is definitely not um, studies, but that's okay. Just focus on yeah, doing your school proud, doing yourself proud, and yeah. So yeah, I think that period is going to be the toughest period in terms of catching up after yeah, after the after the competition end. So I guess uh, you can I think how to manage my time well is to like set my priorities straight as cliche as it seems. So 
when it's time to you know play hard for like in your CCA, just go for it. And if it's time to study, I'll catch up. You know it yourself, uh, So yeah, how do you manage them? Oh, I find it, I can't really answer time management question these days. I think a bit rusty. <laughs> What career are you planning to pursue? Oh, um, teaching. <laughs> yeah, so um, tomorrow I'll be having a, a taster course for chemistry. It will be about atomic structure. So if you guys want to have a, uh, yeah, you have to answer the previous few questions about like how to get a head start, you guys also can come for this taster course tomorrow. So yeah, in that one hour, I'll be trying to teach. And yeah, I think I like teaching somehow. I don't know when I, where I got that passion from. I like to share knowledge and you know make other people uh, let people you know understand. You know when you, the look on your face when they finally understand something is quite priceless to me. Uh. so hopefully I'll be a, yeah teacher or lecturer one day. No. Uh, no skip. I think it's a repetition, right? Are you planning to sell your notes? <laughs> Yes, it's yes. Okay. I can't say yes, right? You can't say yes. <laughs> okay, I can't say yes. Okay, no, I'm not selling my notes, man. It, it means a lot to me. <laughs> no, my hair. <laughs> no, yeah, I'm not um selling my notes. Okay, but Inky is we are going to we are collating like um J3 graduates notes now. A days and why you want to stop? Okay, the director of Inky is here. <laughs> are you? Are you? Wait, are you on? What? Oh, they can see me. Hey, hey, hi guys. Hello. Hi. Okay, so regarding this question, right? Uh, good question. Um, we're not gonna sell our notes. Sean <laughs> is not gonna sell. Uh, my, my name is Yi Cheng, by the way. I am. Uh, I I founded the Inky Learning with a couple of friends. So if you are going to Hua Chong, we'll be your seniors. And so um, regarding notes, if you guys are worried about notes and regarding worried about like resources and things like that, right? We do have resources. So all you gotta do is first of all join our Discord, which uh you know we'll put up the, the QR code later for the next one. And the second thing is uh once you are there, right, we will have resources under our Discord as well as a website where we can we have a lot of like compiled notes that all the tutors here, all of them here, have kindly curated. Yeah. for you guys okay so it includes um you know resources from every single subject not just chemistry we have gp basically every subject that you can possibly take uh, apart from the h3s we're still working on that so regarding notes don't worry too much when you enter jc we will be here to help you okay cool okay back to sean <laughs> i could say that myself but okay carry on <laughs> was biochem and econ a lot of content yes a lot of content um bio okay yeah i'd say i think the previous speaker bio i think they have mentioned that the previous speaker mentioned that yes there's a lot of one of the downsides of bio is there's a lot of things to cram and yeah more stuff to cram than chem honestly yeah because to score questions you basically regurgitate and that's very really sad but yeah econs okay econs is art so sometimes you need to have it's not really objective so you have to build your own your own views, um, yeah, your own opinions. Something like that. It's not just like you know a hard and fast rule that this is correct and this is wrong. Uh. But okay, to answer the question, I keep going side, I keep like sidetracking, man. Like, oh my god. Yeah, there's a lot of content to learn, actually. So I actually make notes for all of them. Um you guys, yeah, I'm yeah, like I like to make notes, I don't know why, yeah, but it's I think it actually helped me for you know revision for exams because I cannot see myself like Flipping through the con the lecture book, knowing that some of them is not important, you know. So like I sieve out information, or like I try to, you know, take sieve information and like compartmentalize them into something that I myself understand the most. Uh. so yeah, another reason why I cannot sell notes is because I uh, believe that you have to make you know your own yourself best uh, in terms of note making. Like if I sell my if I give you my notes or share, wait, that's counterintuitive. No, 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 but yeah, I believe you should make your own notes ultimately, even though we have resources in Inky. Like that can be a definitely a reference for y'all to like you know emulate, but so learn from, yeah learn from uh, but so but ultimately at the end of the day you should be making your own notes because you understand yourself best and you know which part requires more help for yeah you know which part you need more help in and more like need to pay more attention to uh. but altogether yes there's a lot of content during A levels um I believe for my experience um econs and bio fell on the same week or on the same day actually yeah for one of the days and yeah that was quite a nightmare to <laughs> study for so 
but by then I think that you are so familiar with the syllabus that you won't be, you know, re-memorizing everything. You know, in secondary school, maybe you'll be like, you know, chanting or reading out the words that like whatever you memorize out loud, right? Oh, that's for me, yeah, that's not yeah. But in JC, I come to a point where you're just it's just in you already yeah, towards the end of the like towards A levels. Yeah. Uh, how are the questions like in JC Chem? Is it similar to O levels? No. <laughs> uh, okay. Yeah. Honestly, I yeah, it's been a while since I look back at um my the I like secondary school exams, but how are the questions like? Yeah, it's no uh, short. Is there a lot of memorization? There's a trick. Yeah, there is definitely a trick to memorize all the groups. That's why. Uh, my favorite topic is still organic chem because there is a way to consolidate everything together. There's a there's a structure for you to make your own notes. I will leave it to you to explore. But yeah, if you go um if you follow our YouTube channel and go back to our organic chem webinar that me and now um Cheng, we did like six months ago. Yeah, there is a structure to actually memorize stuff. Or yeah, together especially for organic chem. Other than that, but try not to memorize uh, because memorize means that if you're memorizing means that you're not really understanding it also, right? So yeah, I think that rote yeah, root learning is not the way to go for chem, bio, econs, no. Yeah. Please, please try to understand. If you don't know, you can always consult us or your teachers how to do well in chem. <laughs> so I don't know. Yeah, that's basically what I said just now. Um one note taking two discipline um three uh expose yourself to more questions uh, because i realized that maybe okay because i'm i've st still been practicing chemistry for my own reasons but like uh i realized that there's a way once you do enough questions you are able to spot some question types something can there, there are ways to just spot question types in exams like so certain ways of answering a question or certain techniques to go about doing it. So once you yeah find find the hacks for yourself uh, whatever suits you best. How do you do with high influx of information? Oh, uh, this all those you know all those YouTube channels with all those studying methods, right? Uh, yeah, you can definitely go and take a look at them, like how they whatever space repetition or whatsoever. <laughs> yeah, I think that's one way you one avenue that you can get some inspiration from because I myself back then in JC when I, I didn't really yeah, look for um these channels or this kind of what um flashcards yeah I think some ways you can do it to com compartmentalize your your high influx of information I guess you can do flashcards your own notes my maps basically try to reorganize the notes to something you understand you also understand best what do I like about organic chem? Organic chem, I don't know. It's cool drawing, drawing them. Uh, like drawing, drawing the structures. Uh, like, yeah, you know when you draw exams. Uh. What? Okay, wrap it up. Okay, yeah, okay. I, yeah, I like to. I think it's quite creative. Because, uh, like the way they can ask questions in like exams, right? Sometimes it's not just purely like regurgitating an answer because sometimes you need to you know put on your thinking caps, be a Sherlock, be Sherlock for a moment, you know, to try to be a detective and answer some questions. 